a young girl was distributing the Bhagavad Gita and Krishna book in the trains in Paris. She showed this book to one person. This person was very largely built. He had a good physique and he seemed to be a very wealthy person. This man looked at the Krishna book, looked at the girl with anger and with such intense hatred, he just tore this Krishna book into two, threw it on the ground, stepped upon it, stomped upon it, looked at this girl with great anger, held her by the hair and threw her out of the train in great anger. She fell down on the ground, she started bleeding, it was devastating. And this person took the two pieces of Krishna book which he had torn, brought it home, showed it to his wife as a souvenir of the devastation which he had created and threw it on the table at his house. His housemaid took these two pieces of Krishna book and she thought maybe here is a book which has been torn. She put the two pieces together, taped it and kept it in the bookshelf, not knowing the connection between that book and the incident which had happened. Several years passed, this man who was a banker, he went through a devastating personal crisis. His wife died, his son became a drunkard, he left all the jobs, his daughter ran away with somebody and his entire personal life was in tatters. Because of his wife's death and the severe family crisis, this banker started losing interest in his job and he started actually drinking. He became a drunkard and he even started contemplating suicide. One of those days, as he was suicidal, his eyes turned around and looked at the bookshelf and he thought, is there any book which can help me at this time of crisis? And his hand went and pulled out one book and this was the same book which he had torn apart, thrown on the ground and stomped upon and his housemaid had actually joined it, the Krishna book. He read through this book and in that he read about one incident where Vasudeva is trying to preach to Kamsa that why are you afraid of death? Because ultimately the soul transmigrates from one body to another. The soul is eternal. The body is ever-changing. Just that example of how the body is constantly changing and the soul remains eternal gave him so much hope because he realized that I am so depressed by my wife's death but actually she is not dead. That gave him hope. And then he started reading that book. And when he read through that book, for next three to four days, he was actually in tears. And then he looked at the address and found out the address of the nearest temple. Reached out to the temple and when the temple president opened the door, he found here was a man in suit and tie, a wealthy looking banker on his hands and knees kneeling down. And the first thing which came out of this banker's lips was, please forgive me, please forgive me, I'm an offender, I'm an offender. I committed a great offense, somehow please accept me and engage me in service. The temple president was bewildered because he couldn't understand the context because this was an incident which had happened several years ago. And this banker was expressing regret for the misbehavior which he had committed towards that devotee girl book distributor. What happened was, at this stage, he started connecting with the devotees and then he started practicing the process. He got transformed and then he came and made a request in the temple. Can you please allow me to move into the temple? Because now I'm in my 40s. I want to really dedicate my life to share this message with others. The devotees gave him the permission. He moved into the temple. And believe it or not, ironically, within a few months, he became a book distributor, distributing the Bhagavad Gita and the Krishna book to hundreds and thousands of people. That's the power of the message of the Gita. 
therefore krishna says in bhagavad gita that evam param para praptam imam rajarshyo vidu sakale neha mahata yogo nashta parantapa this knowledge of the gita is coming in proper guru disciple succession and this can transform our lives